Hi, Larry Alterman here, and today I'm going to talk about pressure tanks. These are the kind of tanks you use if you have a well, or your town just doesn't supply enough pressurized water, or you have water in a tank and there's no town water. These will pressurize your water so that you get good pressure in your house. And uh, many, there are many videos about pressure tanks, and they describe the three kinds of pressure tanks. But what I noticed is that they don't really describe why you would want to get one tank over another. In other words, there's three main types of tanks. There's the old style galvanized or stainless steel tank. There's what's called the bladder tank and there's what's called the diaphragm tank. The, they're, uh, and they all have their pros and cons. And, there, and sometimes you would want to get one, and sometimes you would want to get others. There are different prices. So nobody talks about the pros and cons, so it's hard to make an informed decision about what kind of pressure tank to get. So if you watch this video, I'm going to explain how the pressure tanks differ, but more importantly, I'm going to explain the pros and cons of each type of pressure tank so that you can make an informed decision about which kind of pressure tank is best for you to buy. Okay, so let's get to it <clears throat> and start explaining the different types of tanks. Here's a picture showing all three types, main types of tanks, namely the original plain stainless steel or galvanized tank over here, here's a bladder pressure tank, and here's a diaphragm pressure tank. So let's talk about the stainless steel pressure tank or the original pressure tank that was used for many years before the bladder and diaphragm pressure tanks were even invented. The original tank is just a plain tank. It's hollow inside. There's no rubber. There's nothing inside. It's just an airproof, waterproof tank. Water comes in and water goes out. Now here's the way it works. Originally there's no water in the tank. And let's say that you're working with a pressure between 20 and 40 pounds. So your, your, your uh, cut on pressure is 20 and your cut off pressure is 40. Now originally there's no water in the tank. So the water is going to be down at this level and the pressure reading is going to be zero. And now water is going to start to flow in the tank. As water goes into the tank, because the pump is on, so water is going into the tank. As water goes into the tank, the air that's trapped above the water starts to compress. And it compresses more and more, so the pressure reading goes up. And the water continues to flow into the tank all the way up to maybe this point here where it reaches a pressure of 40 psi, which is the cutoff pressure. At this point, the pump stops, and the air is trapped above the water, and the water is waiting to be used by the uh, consumer. Now, let's say the consumer starts to use the water. The water level drops. The compressed air is pushing the water out. The water level drops. As the water level drops, the pressure goes down. Eventually, the pressure is going to get down to 20 PSI, which is your cut on pressure. At that point, the pump is going to go on and it's going to fill up again till it reaches 40 PSI. It's going to turn off. It's going to go down to 20 PSI. Up to here, down to here. Now, the key thing to note about this is that <clears throat> the amount of water that you get between when the pump goes off and when it has to go back on again which is called your drawdown, and that's an important concept, important thing to remember, that's what we'll be looking at for all these pumps, is your drawdown as a percentage of the tank size. If you look at the drawdown on this type of tank, it's actually quite small. It's only from this point here to this point here. So the drawdown, the amount of water, pressurized water that you get compared to the size of the tank is very small. You might look at the tank and it looks huge and you say, boy, I'm going to get a lot of pressurized water. But the amount of water you get compared to the t size of the tank is quite small. And I'll have some figures for you on that later. Okay. If you want to see what a galvanized or stainless steel tank looks like in real life, here's a picture of, uh, of a galvanized tank, of a stainless steel tank, actually. This is the one I have at home, actually. And this is what it looks like. It's just a plain tank. There's nothing inside, okay? Now, uh, let's go back to the other picture. And now let's talk about the bladder tank. The bladder tank, a bladder is like a balloon, okay? 
it's uh, here's the balloon right in here and when the water goes in what, what you do and above the balloon is compressed air which you put in through this tire valve over here so let's say your cutoff pressure is your cut on pressure is 20 again and your cut off pressure is 40 now let's say there's no water in the tank the water level the, the the bladder the balloon is going to be pushed down by the air all the way to the bottom so there's going to be all air in here and there's going to be no water but the pressure is going to be there's still going to be pressure in the tank unlike for this one where the pressure becomes zero when the water is empty when the water is empty here you're going to it's still going to have pressure and how much pressure is it going to have well that's actually controlled by you the consumer and what you're going to do is you're going to put the amount of pressure in to equal to your to your cut off pressure i mean to your cut on pressure so that for example if your cut on pressure is 20 pounds we've been using 20 for the cut on and 40 for the cut off if your cut on pressure is 20 you're going to fill this tank above the air with 20 pounds of pressure now when there's no water in this bladder, the bladder is going to collapse all the way down to the bottom, but there's still going to be 20 pounds of pressure. Now here's the fantastic thing about the bladder tank. As the water starts to come in, it doesn't have to start filling a, a lot of water before it starts getting pressurized. The pressure starts at 20, whereas with this tank, the galvanized or the stainless steel, the pressure starts at zero. It has to put a lot of water in just to get to 20 pounds. But with the bladder tank, the pressure starts at 20 pounds, and so it fills up and fills up until it reaches 40 pounds, which might be up here somewhere. And so you get a lot more um, drawdown water compared to the size of the tank. So that's the big advantage of the bladder tank. It, uh, it has a lot of drawdown compared to the size of a stainless steel tank. That's the main advantage. Uh, also, the water is never touching the metal. The water goes into this rubber bladder and never has to touch the metal. Uh, so the metal here can be made out of steel because there's, there's, the water is not in there. Whereas over here, it has to be stainless steel. Now, uh, here's what the bladder, here's what the, uh, the, the bladder tank looks like in real life. I'll show you a couple of pictures. Uh, here's one picture right here, and this is a cutoff view. And you can see that inside there's this bladder here, and as the water comes in, it fills up this bladder, and above the bladder is the compressed air which pushes down. Okay, but I want to show you another picture, which is this one right here. This shows a bladder pressure tank. And the key thing I want you to see here is this, uh, the way this is attached over here. This is a flange, and it holds the bladder inside, okay? The bladder is actually removable. If the bladder ever, ever breaks, what you do is you remove these four screws, I mean these uh, five screws, you remove them, you take off this top piece, the bladder comes out, and you put a new bladder in, which has a flange. You put this metal piece over the flange, you bolt it down, and you have a new bladder. So the bladder can be replaced. That's the nice thing about a bladder pressure tank. Okay, now let's look at the diaphragm tank. A diaphragm tank uh, is... The one thing about going back to the bladder pressure tank, uh, the bladder... you is uh, much more efficient than the compressed than the uh, stainless steel but the bladder itself uses about four percent of the uh, area so there's a four percent inefficiency because of the rubber taking up some room inside the tank if we go to a diaphragm tank a diaphragm tank is different than, than a bladder in that it everything is done at the factory and it's all sealed it's like hermetically sealed and it cannot be opened up if anything ever goes wrong with a diaphragm tank, there's nothing you can do but throw it out. So you might say, well, that's bad. Uh, but the point is that, they, that the diaphragm tank is usually made at a higher quality than, and is more expensive than the bladder tank. Whereas the bladder tank is made at a lower quality and eventually the bladder might break and you have to you just replace the bladder. The diaphragm tank uh, is, 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 the diaphragm is sealed at at the time of manufacture, it's it's pressed in. I saw a video of this. It's it's pressed in at manufacture. It's really sealed tight, 
and this diaphragm that goes across here, it, uh, it can never come out. The rubber is a very thick rubber, and, uh, and it will, it, it's supposed to last for many years. But if something does go wrong, there's absolutely nothing you can do except throw out the tank. Now, the th other thing about the bladder is that uh, the water goes, unlike uh, with the bladder tank, in the diaphragm tank here, the water actually goes into the bottom of the tank uh, and starts to push up the diaphragm and the compressed air is up here, the air and as in the bladder tank, the air and the water never mix. And once again, you get this efficiency because the air pressure starts at, let's say, 20, which is your cut on pressure. And so you get more of a drawdown than you do with this stainless steel tank. Okay, and this is actually a little bit more efficient than a bladder tank because the diaphragm tank, the diaphragm only uses up 2% of the volume inside volume is used up by the rubber, whereas the uh, bladder type uses up about 4%. Um, and uh, I'll show you a picture of a diaphragm type tank. And here you can see it. It's very simple looking on the outside. Uh, inside the diaphragm goes right across where these two halves are welded together. And you can see that when the, where the water comes out, there's no screws, there's no nothing. It's all uh, hermetically sealed, welded, and uh, it's simple, but if something goes wrong, that's the end of it. Okay, I want to go back to the original diagram, and I want to start discussing the pros and cons of each kind of tank. So let's start with the original old-style stainless steel tank. Now, it sort of has a bad reputation. Everybody says, oh, this is the old-fashioned tank. It's no good. Uh, it's not new technology. You should get a bladder tank. You should get a diaphragm tank. Well, is this true, or is the old technology tried and true and the best? Well, it depends. And it's sort of got a bad rep, the old original tank, but it's really not that bad. The main problem with the with this tank is the drawdown compared to the tank size. And the tank is big and the amount of drawdown is small. And so you get this big bulky tank uh, and uh, only providing a little bit of pressurized water. And that may or may not matter to you. If your tank is out somewhere and you live on a farm and your tank is out and you don't care what how big the tank is or what it looks like, then you don't care. If the tank is in your basement and you only have a small area to put the tank, then you want the tank to be as efficient as possible. So, uh, for me, the tank size isn't really that big a deal as long as you have a place to put the, put the tank. Now, a person might say, well, if the tank is so big, wouldn't it be more expensive? And the answer is, is not really. Even though the tank is much bigger, the stainless tank is much is much cheaper than the other kinds of tank than the bladder or diaphragm. So you might ask the question, isn't this confusing? It's bigger, but it's cheaper, but it's bigger, but it doesn't have a lot of drawdown. So what's the most cost efficient tank? And uh, that to answer that question, we need to do a little bit of analysis. And I will do that analysis later on in this video. But for now, keep this in mind. The lower the pressure range, the more efficient this type of tank is. So if you have a 20 to 40 range, it's not too bad. But if you have a 40 to 60 range, it starts to become very inefficient. So later on, as I said, we're going to do a cost analysis between the different kinds of tanks. Uh, there's one other thing that I should talk about with the with this uh, old style tank, and that is the problem of what they call um, water logging. Water logging is when, after several months of time, the water up here tends to get absorbed. The air up here tends to get absorbed into the water, uh, or the w air slowly leaks out through the valve, or for whatever reason, you start to lose the air above the water. And as you start to lose the air above the water, your tank becomes less and less efficient. So you have to reset your tank, uh, and you have to do this every several months. You have to reset your tank you have, and by emptying it completely and refilling it up again. And some people make a big deal about this. They say, gee, you don't want to have to do this maintenance every three months. Well, the maintenance depends on how your tank is set up. If your tank is not set up properly, the maintenance can be a pain in the neck. Uh, you might have to uh, unscrew things and take things apart and whatever, and it would be horrible. 
but if you set it up properly then the maintenance can literally take only five minutes so let me show you the way that this tank should be set up properly I'll show you this picture that I have uh, right here and here's your pressure tank and it should be set up with a number of valves uh, this is your pipe coming in from the pump this is your pipe going out to the house this is a release pipe going to nowhere going to drainage and this is a air valve release valve now in the normal situation when you're not doing maintenance this is closed because you don't want air escaping this is open because the pump should be putting water into the tank this valve here is open because you want water going to the house and this valve here is closed because you don't want your water escaping into the yard okay so now let's say you find out your after three months your tank is a little bit of waterlogged what are you going to do well if you have it set up correctly like this it is so very simple the first thing you do is you turn your pump off uh, hopefully you have a switch if not you turn off the fuse after you turn off the pump you take this valve here and you close it and you take this valve so nothing can come in from the pump you take this valve over here to the house and you close it and you take this valve here and you open it when you open this valve the air is it's the the it's still pressurized now when you open this valve the water is going to come shooting out pretty fast and the first 10 seconds or so the water is going to shoot out very fast after a while when the pressure is gone uh, the water is going to come out much slowly because there's going to be a vacuuming d developing in the top of the tank and what you want to do then is you want to release this valve here so air can come in so the air can come in and the water can be released now if you have it set up in this way you can literally drain the tank in three minutes four minutes five minutes at the most it's very quick and very easy and after the tank is completely drained you just set your valves back you turn this valve closed you turn this valve open you turn this valve open you turn this valve closed you turn on your pump and everything's set for another three months so uh, doing the water logging maintenance on this type of tank is not as bad as people make it out to be as long as you have your tank set up properly okay let's talk about the next type of tank which is the um, bladder tank and the bladder tank and the diaphragm tank we don't really have to talk about them separately from now on the main difference between as I said between the bladder and the diaphragm is the diaphragm is usually a higher quality uh, it's meant to be maintenance free but the bladder has advantages if the bladder ever breaks you can fix it you could clean the bladder if you wanted to you could take out the bladder and you could clean it if it ever gets sturdy and that you can look inside the bladder tank but with the diaphragm tank you don't know what the hell is in there and you can never clean it you can never do anything it's a mystery what's inside but on the other hand it's supposed to be maintenance free and last for many years but in terms of functionality the bladder tank and the diaphragm tank are very very similar in terms of functionality so let's just talk about the pros and cons of the bladder tank now what is the pros the pros is that you get much more space efficiency so that you get a higher drawdown as a percentage of the tank size that's the main uh, that's the main advantage also because the air is separated from the water you don't get the water logging you don't tend to lose the pressure so you don't get this water logging and you don't usually have to do maintenance on it if you do have to do maintenance all you have to do is fill air in through this valve up here and you can repressurize what's above the uh, the air above the water so uh, so the main advantages of this bladder tank are a that uh, there's no maintenance you don't have to do the water logging maintenance on it and B it's efficient now what are the disadvantages the disadvantages are that it costs more it costs quite a bit more and uh, and and if something goes wrong you don't necessarily know that something is wrong because if this bladder leaks starts to leak the water will start to go into the tank and this tank is usually not rust proof because it's not designed to have water in it and you won't know right away that something is wrong because the tank will still work to some extent it will sort of work like a regular tank instead of like a bladder tank and it will still work a little bit but it won't be very efficient and 
it will rust the whole inside of the tank and you'll have to throw away your tank. So uh, basically this diaphragm bladder tank, they're, they're more complicated, they're, there's more things to go wrong and they cost more. Those are the disadvantages. The advantages are it's supposed to be maintenance free and you get more space efficiency. You get a, a higher drawdown compared to the tank size. And so those are the advantages and disadvantages. And so you might ask yourself this question. Well, if you don't really care about doing a little maintenance on the uh, on, on the regular type of on the uh, on the stainless tank, and or you don't really care that much about you know uh, the space. So really, what you want is you want the most cost efficient solution. So if you have a particular need, like you need a small space, then by all means get the bladder tank. Or if you're afraid of doing maintenance, by all means get the diaphragm tank, which is supposed to have the least amount of maintenance. But if you're just trying to do the most cost efficient solution, how would you figure out? what is most cost efficient? That's the question. So I'm going to show you that. And I'm going to show you that. I'm going to start out by showing you a chart which shows the uh, efficiency of the different, of the different <coughs> tanks uh, at different pressure ranges. So let's take a look at this chart. Let's take uh, one example uh, and then you can look at it. We can look. You can look at other examples at your leisure. So this shows in the left column. It shows the different pressure ranges that you might want to operate at. So uh, a common pressure range, for example, is a low pressure of 20 and a high pressure of 40. And then what this shows is that uh, if you have a 100 liter tank. Uh, all these figures are for 100 liter tanks, or you can think of it as percentages of a, of any size tank. Uh, for a 100 liter tank. It won't reach the, uh, the, the, the initial pressure, the cut-on pressure, until it has 57.6 liters in it. And it won't reach the cut-off pressure in, until it has 73.1 liters in it. And uh, I guess you don't really care what's going on inside. This is sort of for your interest. And so you find that the drawdown, the difference between these two numbers, is 15.5 liters. So what that's saying is for a 100 liter stainless steel tank, okay, operating at a 20 to 40 pound range, your drawdown or your percentage of efficiency is 15.5, okay. If we look at the same thing for the uh, bladder tank, you get a 35 percent efficiency. So the bladder tank is more than twice as efficient at this range of 20 to 40, okay? Let's now go to kind of an extreme, and let's say you're operating, let's say, uh, 50 to 70. So that would be if you really wanted very high pressure. If you wanted 50 to 70, you'd have to fill up your tank with 70, 77% just to get to 50 pounds, to 82%, 82.6 to get to 70 pounds, so your drawdown would only be 5.3 liters or 5.3%. Whereas for the bladder tank, you'd have a drawdown of 22.7 liters or 22.7%. So you can see at this high pressure range, the bladder tank is more than four times as efficient, okay? If we go to a very low pressure range, like 10 to 20, okay, or, uh, or yeah, let's say let's say 10 to 30, 10 to 30, then your your drawdown efficiency here is 26 percent for the stainless and 43 percent for the bladder. So it's not even twice as good. So uh, <clears throat> this is uh, the chart that shows you the efficiency uh, of the tank of each kind of tank, a stainless tank or a bladder tank, at the pressure range you want to operate. Most people operate 20 to 40 or 30 to 50. If you were operating at 30 to 50, you have, your stainless tank is only 10% efficient, whereas your bladder tank is 30% efficient, three times as efficient. So. Uh, it seems like the bladder tank is a hell of a lot more efficient. Does that mean it's more cost effective? So uh, I will now do 
a calculation based on my own experience and we'll calculate uh, which is actually most cost efficient by giving uh, several examples. Okay, <clears throat> these are real life figures uh, I got from my local hardware store. I priced an 80 liter stainless tank at $68. I priced a 40 liter bladder tank at $132. So the bladder tank was smaller, half the size, but cost cons almost twice as much. Okay, now let's suppose I am operating at a 20 to 40 pressure range. My stainless steel tank is 15.5% efficient. So 15.5% times 80 liters, the tank is 80 liters, I will get 12.4 liters of draw from that tank operating at that pressure range. So if you divide $68 by 12.4 liters, you find that your cost per liter of draw is $5.48. This, this can be used as your cost efficiency factor, your cost per liter of draw. $5.48 for the stainless at 20 to 40 pressure range. Now, let's look at the bladder tank. It's 40 liters at f and it's 35.1 percent efficient. So 35.1 times 40 liters, it gets 14 liters of draw. But it costs $132. So $132 by 14 liters gives you a cost of 9.43 for each liter of draw. So it costs more for a liter of draw using the bladder tank, considerably more, than for a liter of the stainless tank. Okay. Now let's take a different uh, pressure range. Now remember that <coughs> the tanks have different efficiencies at different pressure ranges. And the higher the pressure range, the worse the stainless tank does. And the higher the pressure range, the better the bladder tank does. So we showed at a low pressure range, the uh, stainless was considerably cheaper. So let's look at a higher pressure range. Suppose you're going to operate at a 40 to 60 pressure range. Well, the stainless steel tank is only 7.2% 7 efficient. 7.2% 7 efficient times 80 liters only gives you 5.8 liters of draw. Well, it costs 68 liters, 68 dollars, divided by 5.8 liters, so the cost is 11 dollars and 72 cents for each liter of draw. Now let's look at the bladder tank. It's 40 liters, but it's 25.7 percent efficient. So 25.7 times 40, you're going to get 10.3 liters of draw, but it's 132 dollars. 132 dollars divided by 10.3 liters gives you a cost of 12.82 dollars for each liter of draw. It's still more expensive, although only by a little bit. So if you're looking for cost efficiency, this shows that the stainless tank is actually more cost efficient than the bladder tank. So um, <clears throat> anyways, you can use this method to do your own calculation. I guess you first have to figure out how much drawdown you want. The higher the drawdown, the less off of the pump cycles on or and off. You don't want your pump cycling on and off too often for two reasons. One, it's annoying, and two, uh, too many cycles can uh, lower the lifetime of your pump. So you want to think about what you do and how much drawdown you want. For example, a typical shower might be uh, 20 liters. So if you have 20 liters of drawdown, that means that your pump will go on once for your average shower. Okay, so you got to calculate how much drawdown you want and then you got to calculate use uh, the pressure range you want and then you got to calculate using the chart that I showed you uh, the efficiency of the tanks and then you got to price out to get a tank to get a bladder tank of the correct size it's going to cost this much to get a stainless tank at this size uh, it's going to cost this much so uh, it should be easy using the chart I gave you and the method I showed you to uh, figure out which is most cost efficient for you. 
So, um, what's the conclusion? Uh, I can tell you my own experience. I bought a, a bladder type uh, tank and it broke after only six months. I mean, that's my experience, but I'm sure some people have great experiences with it. I was able to fix it. The, it turns out that the bladder didn't break, but the flange was not screwed on tight enough. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. Uh, I guess I guess my conclusion is this, that the old style tank has sort of got a bad rep. It's considered old technology, but I still think it's the best. I mean, it's simple. If it's made out of stainless steel, it's going to last forever. And it's the most cost efficient. So I would go with the old style stainless steel unless you're concerned about space or looks. If you want something that looks better or fits in a smaller space, then you would want to get the bladder. But if you're not concerned with looks or space, I don't see why you wouldn't want the old style stainless steel tank. Um, so anyways, that's my conclusion. Um, but it's up to you to make your own conclusion. I hope you enjoyed my video. It was kind of long. Uh, I think it would take quite a bit of concentration to get through it all, but I hope if you do get through it, you've learned a lot. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, over and out.